Well, I think it surprises a lot of people, but uh, more than 98% of global communications is traveled on submarine fiber optic cables around the world. Most of them are inherently transoceanic, so they are connecting continents, connecting countries, connecting markets. This isn't like an oil or gas pipeline. So when we talk about fiber optic cable, as a general proposition, we're talking about something that has the diameter of a garden hose. Long before fiber optic cable systems existed in the early to mid 90s, copper systems were on the seabed floor throughout most of the 20th century. And even before that, in the late 1800s, you had telegraph cables that were sitting on the seabed floor as well. It's really important that they're not suspended sitting in the middle of the water column. The cables have to sit on the seabed floor, and in fact, from basically the beach until you get out to roughly the continental shelf, they're typically trenched below the seabed floor. That's to protect them. Once you get out past the continental shelf, which is about, think of it as about 1,000 meters deep, at that point, it's just sitting on the seabed floor. What's the biggest concern are fishing habits, nettings getting caught in the cables, anchors of big ships being caught on these cables, sometimes where you assumed it was trenched below the seabed floor. After a period of time, perhaps some part of the cable is exposed and you weren't aware of it. Those are the biggest risks to, to the system once it's in the ocean. As a general rule, most of us as submarine cable owners and operators contribute our systems effectively into a cooperative. There are different co-ops around the world established for the purpose of maintaining these systems. Just like satellite communications technology improves dramatically every, say, five to ten year period, the reality is the same is true for submarine fiber optic cable systems as well. So the quantity of capacity that we can push through the pipe from end to end is a huge multiple today of what it was, let's say, in 1998 through 2000 when the last generation of these systems were being designed and built. We expect within the next 10 years to be able to push more than six times the available capacity through the system at that point. These are systems that remain highly reliable, very fast, very secure, and yes, the primary paths for global communications.